It's Dr. Dev again, your cataract coach. For a white cataract with what I call USA flag sign, do you see the red, the white, and the blue? Well, the red is the subconjunctival hemorrhage from the suction ring of a femtosecond laser. The white, of course, is the white cataract, and the blue is the tripan blue dye used to stain the capsule. Now, by using the femtosecond laser to make our capsorexis, we can do it in a closed eye without having an incision from the outside. That allows us to get a nice round capsorexis in about one second with the laser without allowing any Argentinian flag sign. There is the central capsule just being pulled off. And you can see the laser's made a perfectly round and well-centered five millimeter round capsulotomy. Now the nucleus, we're just gonna rotate. You actually don't need much hydrodissection, if at all, because this white cataract has the liquefied cortex. Now we're time for our FACO probe. You know, by having the laser do the, the rexus for us, or the capsulotomy, really does save time. We'll clean up some of this residual cortex here. We'll buzz in with the FACO probe, dig in the chopper, and let's try to chop this nucleus into pieces around the equator, and there we go, central chop. This lens certainly has a good degree of density. You'll notice that the nucleus is a little bit on the small side, and that's because of all the cortex that has been liquefied as the white cataract developed. This, this lens certainly had some degree of intumescence or fluid inside the capsule bag, but we did not have any issues with ca the capsule uh, radializing because we used the femtosecond laser in a closed eye, in a closed chamber. We're just doing chop here, chop technique, and it requires quite a bit of chopping. This lens is relatively dense. You can see that coloring of the lens and showing, showing its density. Chopper just used to bring the pieces centrally and break them into small pieces. Here we go, little fragments being aspirated down. That red subconjunctival hemorrhage ring, that'll go away over the course of the next couple days. And that, of course, is a side effect of using the femtosecond laser. Chopper being placed in a safe position as these last few fragments come out. And there comes most of the epinucleus as well. And you can see there's very little cortex left in the capsule bag here. This remaining piece of epinucleus, we'll just get out with the IA probe. Now I still make my incisions here with the diamond keratome. I think they do create a nicer incision than the femtosecond laser, at least for now. That may change in the future. The IA probe is used to remove the remaining cortex and any other wispy lens material. And the eye's looking pretty good. At this point, the patient who's under topical anesthesia is just surprised to finally be able to see so many lights. Now, I will admit that the femtosecond laser is a very expensive piece of machinery. It's a half a million dollars or more, and with a very high cost per use. But in certain cases like this, it certainly does make things a little easier. If you don't have access to this very expensive piece of equipment, Watch the other videos. You can still do an absolutely beautiful job without having to use the expensive femtosecond laser. Caps are bag being inflated fully with viscoelastic. That's a nice fill. And we're going to put our lens in the caps or bag. Here we're going to use a single piece acrylic monofocal lens. And that'll go right inside the caps or bag. Some of these patients who do have these white cataracts do have a little bit extra inflammation in the post-op period. And it's okay to give these patients a little bit more steroid during that time. Using the chopper there to fixate the eye, the patient's having a hard time looking at our lighting. So the eye being fixated here. Blocking the light while the technician loads our lens. Usually there's no delay in the lens loading, but if there is, we can be very patient. This is still a pretty quick case. Looks like there's the lens from the technician. Insert that into the eye and deliver it. And when we deliver it, we make sure it goes under the nasal rexus. Let it start to open. And then use the chopper to ensure that both haptics and the optics stay completely within the capsule bag. 
opens up quite nicely. This lady is a highly hyperopic patient. And so this is a small eye. And you can see that six millimeter optic looks positively large or humongous in this eye. We'll go inside the eye, remove the viscoelastic, including from behind the eye well. And certainly remove the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. This lady has dilated beautifully, so we can see that there's no retained lens material. If you have a white cataract with patients that don't have such a good dilation, the pupil is a little bit smaller, make sure you do wash and, and uh, irrigate underneath the iris to ensure that no residual cataract pieces are left behind. So cleaning out the angle here as well, as well as the anterior chamber, and this is looking pretty good. So seal up the incisions and we'll be done shortly. So interesting case, yes, you can certainly use a femtosecond laser to help do a capsulorexis or capsulotomy in a patient with a white cataract. The beauty there is that you don't need to visualize it. You don't need to see it directly. And you don't have the risk of that Argentinian flag sign. You're able to make the capsulorexis in about one second in a closed chamber, completely closed eye. You still will need the tripan blue if you wish to see the capsulorexis. And you can remember my USA flag sign. The red from the subconjheim, the white from the white cataract, and the blue from the tripan blue sign. So red, white, and blue, those are the American flag colors. Thank you guys for watching.